Hello everybody, I'm Kaylee Fretz with Cycling Tips and I'm here with the Specialized Diverge Expert E5 Evo. So Evo, for those not familiar, is basically specialized talk for the extra spicy, rowdy version of a particular thing. So they also do Evo versions of their epic full suspension bike and things like that. They tend to have slacker front ends. They're just designed to have a little bit more fun on the downhills versus just pure speed. And the Diverge Evo definitely fits that whole concept. Now, clearly the most obvious thing about this bike is there's a big flat bar on the front. Uh, Specialized says it's a 750, it's quite wide. I actually just measured it at 760, even wider. Now, of course, in addition to the big wide flat bar, the other thing that kind of sets us apart from most gravel bikes is this little guy right here, the Future Shock, which gives you not a lot of travel, <laughs> but just enough. I think it's 30 millimeters of now damped travel. Now you've got this little knob at the top. You can kind of make it stiffer or softer. Works really well for kind of taking the edge off of rough trails or rough roads or just nasty conditions. I think it works quite well. And I actually think it's better suited to the gravel space here than it is to the road space, which is where it first showed up with that Specialized Roubaix. Frame is Aluminum, the E5 alloy that Specialized loves so much. Build, we've got a 12 speed Shimano XT straight off a mountain bike, one by drivetrain. It's got a 10 to 51 in the back. That's one more than a SRAM 1050. They like to one up each other like that. 51 in the back and a 40 tooth front chain ring. So you got huge, huge span, 40, 10, that's a pretty high gear, all the way to 40, 51, that's an exceptionally low gear. You can get up pretty much anything on this thing. Paired with that Shimano XT drivetrain, we have Magura MT4 hydraulic brakes. An interesting choice, and I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. We've got carbon fiber wheels from DT Swiss. Specialized Rhombus 42 millimeter tires. These have lots of tread on them. They look basically like mini mountain bike tires. And an X-Fusion dropper post. It's the tiny one. Tire clearance is pretty exceptional on this. It'll take a 700 by 47. Pretty fat with a 700C wheel. And if you wanna throw 650s on here, you can run much bigger, right? You run a 50 plus, it's basically a 2.1 inch tire. That makes a lot of sense, again, because of the probably intended purpose of this bike, which is to get a bit rowdier and have a little bit more fun on the descents than you would on a regular drop bar gravel bike. You need room for nice big tires. Now, any good gravel bike needs all sorts of mounts, fender things and extra bottle things and all sorts of stuff. In case you wanna go bike packing or you just got a really long day in the saddle, you wanna you know, carry enough water, things like that, we have extra bottle cage mounts and fender mounts on the fork. We've also got hidden down here. Same thing back here by the rear dropouts. You can carry pretty much anything you want. Now, there are certainly gravel bikes that have a lot more mounts than this. I'm thinking of, well, some options from, from places like Surly where they just sort of stick bolts on wherever they want. But really, if you're doing standard gravel bike stuff, if you're not Lyle Wilcox or something like that, this is probably gonna be enough for you. Now, I mentioned earlier that the Evo version of Specialized Bikes is the sort of spicier version, the rowdier version. Now, for this bike in particular, they've done a couple specific things to make it so. One of them is they've made the whole thing longer. So it's about 30 millimeters longer for a given size than the drop bar diverge. They've also slackened out the front end. The head tube angle is a 70 degree head tube angle. All of that provides 69 millimeters of trail. Now trail isn't something we talk about too much in the mountain bike world, but we're talking gravel bikes here. So that means it's pretty stable. Uh, long story short here is all of those things, they're all borrowed from the mountain bike world and all of them combine to make this feel an awful lot like 
basically a really fast hardtail, really fast, rigid uh, mountain bike. It, it feels almost more like that than it does a gravel bike. Now, obviously there are much skinnier tires, no suspension fork. There's big differences here between this and an actual mountain bike. But that is the, that's the general sense you get when you hop on this thing is it, it feels very mountain bikey. Now, all of this will set you back 2,700 US dollars. So with that, I'm gonna go hop on it, throw some spandex on, go ride it around and tell you if I think it's worth it. Dan Calilari. That's me. Yep, you also rode this Specialized Diverge Expert E5 Evo. Uh, what do you think, what do you think? I think it's super fun for 2,700 bucks. I think it's a steal. Uh, it, you know, it's funny, the ride quality of this is pretty interesting to me because we spent all sorts of money on carbon and this really rode really well and smoothly. Um, maybe that's a testament to the other things that help with compliance. Um, the only thing I really didn't love about it was I get the flat bars on dirt, uh, for sure, it's super fun. On pavement, I found myself leveraging the super wide handlebars a little bit too much, which would make the, the steering wander quite a bit. Uh, and well, especially, it's pretty slack too. It is, it's super slack. And so, you know, if you find yourself on a high speed road descent, which, you know, you're gonna try to avoid those, I imagine, <laughs> on a bike like this. But if you do find yourself on that, uh, you definitely notice the difference between something like this and a more traditional gravel bike setup. Uh, that said, that was really my only huge nitpick with it. Yeah, and I think a couple, of, some of that can come down to these tires, right? You've got basically a shrunken down, honey, I shrunk the kids mountain bike tire on the back here. Yeah. And that really, I'm just showing my age with that movie reference. <laughs> like the knobs on this thing, they just fold over, right? You're, do, when yeah. you're on pavement and you're going fast, they just kind of fold over on you. Now they are fantastic on gravel, yes. like what's underneath our feet right now. Yep. They're super grippy. I mean, we were riding together, you were on a different bike with different tires, yeah. and you kept almost running into the back of me because <laughs> yes. I could stop and turn a lot faster than you could. Yeah. So, so a lot of that I think comes down to the tires, but I would agree that you know the flat bar, it's just not as good on pavement. This isn't a great surprise, drop bars, exist on pavement for a reason. Yep. Flat bars exist off-road for a reason. The combination of these bars with the Future Shock 2, with the dropper post, with the tires that are really good, like I said earlier, it feels like kind of a dumbed down hardtail in a lot of ways. It's just a lot more confidence inspiring anytime things get a little bit rough and rowdy. But you're absolutely right. It doesn't climb as well. When you're out of the saddle, it feels a bit weird. Front end's a little bit slack. It, it, it just doesn't ride pavement or really smooth gravel as well as the other gravel bikes that we've got here. But that's also just no surprise. I will also agree with you on the frame. Now I have I actually kind of have something against carbon gravel bikes these days because I've ridden a lot of aluminum gravel bikes lately and actually aluminum mountain bikes too, aluminum hardtails. Yeah. And they're really good. Yeah. They're incredibly good. This E5 alloy, which is specialized, has been playing around with this stuff for a very, very, very long time. It's light enough. This bike isn't particularly light, let's say 22 pounds yeah. or so, but it's light enough and it's certainly stiff enough. You know, when you're talking about having a 42 millimeter tire or even more underneath you, the comfort side of carbon becomes a lot less important. And then you add in something like the Future Shock, and this is, I mean, this is the most comfortable gravel bike we've got here, and it's aluminum. So it's just really good and it works. Yeah. And if I, you know, passed out here of heat, because it's really hot, <laughs> and this bike just fell over on the rocks. Yeah, you don't have to be precious with it. I, it would be yeah. fine. I'd just pick it up again and keep riding it. Whereas yeah. if I had carbon, I'd have to like, you know, get out my, my microscope and check for cracks yeah. and it's just aluminum. Yeah. It'll be all good. I will I will make another note uh, just before we, we kind of wrap it up on this, but the, the Future Shock is really interesting to me because I've ridden the Future Shock now on road bike, gravel bike, and now this this bike, uh, whatever you want to call this. This is the best execution, I think, of this. Um, I didn't notice it as much when I didn't need it. Uh, and even when I, didn't, when I did need it, it really uh, complemented the ride. I didn't feel like I lost any control. The only place I did notice it, notably, was, again, climbing on smooth, either smooth gravel or on pavement, which is exactly where I notice it on every other iteration of this uh, Future Shock. So I think this is the best execution of this, uh, the best application, I should say. Uh, it works really well on this bike, and I think it's seamless almost, the integration of this. Now the rest of the spec here, we've got a one by drivetrain, 
no surprise there. It's coming from the mountain bike world. Yeah. You basically can't find two by mountain bikes anymore. And so there's, yeah, no real surprise that we got a one by 12 uh, XT with the Praxis chain rings mm -hmm. set up. I think it's, it nails it. What do you think of the brakes? So Magura, we don't see Maguras much at all anymore. Yeah. They just, they just, we just don't, we just don't see them that often. Almost always you'll see Shimano brakes paired with Shimano drivetrains, SRAM brakes paired with SRAM yeah. drivetrains. They, you get a little bit more experimentation on the mountain bike side, but it's pretty unusual still. The MT4s, uh, 160 rotors front and rear, flat mount. What do you think? I, I was pleasantly surprised with them. You know, it's funny because we, we joke a lot about gravel just being mountain bikes from back in the day. And I used to race on something like this back in the day. And this back, is significantly more capable than the first yes, mountain bike race. No mountain doubt. bike that I raced on. No doubt, <laughs> no doubt. Head tube angles have come a long way. Yes. Uh, but Magura was sort of the hotness back then too. And they've made a little bit of a resurgence here. And I think they've done an excellent job. I mean, these feel awesome. The modulation is just great. There's a positive grip on the on the rotor. I mean, powerful. Everything you want a mountain bike, bike, mountain bike brake to do, it does. Um, you know, I, I, I can't find anything to complain about with these. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I think it's the perfect application for these as well because they have a lot of modulation and not a ton of power uh, relative to something like a Shimano brake, for example. Right. But that's perfect because the reality is you overwhelm these tires, these much smaller mm -hmm. tires, relatively easily. And so you want a lot of modulation and it's, it's a perfect match. I was hugely impressed with these Maguras. Yeah. And in fact, like, if I was gonna build myself a flat bar gravel bike, which I've actually been kind of thinking about doing, I think these would be top of the list for me. And it's a really, really smart spec choice. When I first looked at it, I just figured, oh, Specialized is trying to save a couple bucks, right? They, they bought them in bulk yeah. and, they're, and they're, trying to, you know, they're trying to get away with not using the Shimano version. But no, I think that they rode them, loved them. Yeah. And I think it's a really, really good it decision. It is a good choice, yeah. Drop or post, do we like it? Do we not like it? Did you use it? I only used it because your saddle height is different than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need it. I don't think we need it. I think it, the dropper post thing in gravel to me has never really made sense. But uh, what if I want to hucketh the gnar? You can hucketh the gnar if you want to. I will not stop you. Uh, and you can have a saddle in your belly as you <laughs> hucketh said gnar. It's a really tiny dropper post. Like, look at it. It's so small. And it's cute. wee. It's really wee. Yeah. It's, it's just adorable. I don't see the point. I don't see the point of this. Uh, I don't have any application of a bike like this where I'm gonna go down something so steep and so gnarly that I would need those extra 30 millimeters, you know, of drop. The dropper also offs, offers a lot less flex. And so you get a lot less comfort out of a dropper. You'd think like, okay, I, I'm gonna ride some gnarly stuff. I need a dropper post. But really until you get to the point where it's gnarly enough that you actually need it, it's just making your ride less comfortable. That said, on a bike like this, if you are buying a flat bar gravel bike with little mini handlebar suspension, you're probably gonna get rowdy every once in a while. You maybe should consider a mountain bike for that very reason. But if you are, if you have your heart set on a diverge, I kind of like it. Like I used it a couple times yesterday. There were a couple moments where I, you know, saw a little water bar and I wanted to jump and I jumped and I'm glad <laughs> that the saddle was 50 millimeters further away from my behind. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sold. Uh, I don't, I just can't foresee any situation where I would need it. I don't think I'd put it on my bike, but if it showed up on a bike that I was buying, I don't think I'd bother to swap it. I'll you, leave it that way. You could way. always find a reason to have fun with it. Yes. One change on a bike this capable, you go faster so that when you do hit rocks, you hit them going faster, mm. which means you flat more, even with a bigger tire like this. Because this isn't a big tire, let's be clear. I mean, this, this tire <laughs> is still significantly smaller than anything you can run on a mountain bike. Yeah. It's not big enough to really keep up with the rest of the bike. And that's kind of the problem. So we put Kushkor in the back of here. Now, for those not familiar with Kushkor, it's basically just like a giant pool noodle that you put inside the rear tire or front tire. Uh, and it just prevents, well, it doesn't prevent completely. It helps prevent pinch flats and cutting tires. And I have not actually ridden it just yet since we've added the Kushkor, but I have a feeling that that will be a dramatic improvement on the true capability of this bike. Because you could run much lower tire pressure you could actually take advantage of that front end geometry, the big wide bar. You could have a lot more fun on it. Yes, it adds a little bit of weight, but I think that if you were gonna pick one of these up, consider that. And that, uh, that would add 100, 150 bucks to your overall purchase price, but it could be a bit of a game changer to the way that you ride this bike. I've got Kushcore on a hardtail right now, completely changed the way that I ride that bike. I think that this would be the same way. 
it also changes the, the handling feel of your, your bike in general, especially with something like a gravel bike, where you're getting more sidewall support from the, uh, the cush core itself. So you can push into corners a lot harder. Uh, it, it may even change, the, you know, my, one of my chief complaints, which was descending on this on pavement, um, because there would be some, some more of that sidewall support. support. Yeah. So yeah, cush core I think is always a great investment. There's other options out there as well. Uh, Vittoria is now in the game. Uh, so yeah, definitely worth it if you, if, especially with a bike where you're paying 2,700 bucks and you're getting so much bike for such a great deal, it's worth the extra 100 bucks or so to get a cush core. Would you buy this bike over the drop bar version? Ooh, oh boy. Because uh, no. you've ridden both. No, I would not, but that's because I own a really fun mountain bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically where I land on this. Yeah. It's too close to my hardtail. Now, if I didn't own a hardtail, if I didn't really have any interest in riding real mountain bike trails, but I did have interest in occasionally jumping off water bars, I, I might buy this. Mm -hmm. I might buy this. There's definitely a market for this. There's a market for this. There's a space for this. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. We're going to discuss that in much greater depth <laughs> elsewhere on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss anything from any of our field tests. With that, I'm Kaylee Fretz. I'm Dan Cavallari. And we'll be back with another YouTube video in like, if you just click next. <laughs> yeah, like four seconds. <laughs>